behalf of our team, I want to thank you for joining us today for this historic and really a very special, special occasion. To get us started, I would like to ask our Councilman Pete Smith, also Captain Pete Smith, to start us, if you'll all rise, Pete will sing the National Anthem. And as soon as Pete has finished the National Anthem, the co-founder and owner, David Stoop, will then run the program as our official master of ceremonies. I'm going to stop one second and look at each and every one of you, because I've talked to each and every one of you. I know you well, not so well. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. You know, Carol reached out a couple months ago and was like, well, can you you come to the national anthem. I was like, well, do you want me to speak or do you want me to sing? And she was like, well, I want you to sing. I was like, good, because I'm not a really good speaker. So that's <laughs> 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 into the communities and integration um, into the healthcare system. And we really view Maryland House Detox as 
a big step in that direction for the state. So, um, before the citizens, the mothers, the fathers, the brothers and the sisters uh, were plagued by the opiate crisis, um, before communities were um, devastated by death and addiction that we're facing right now, um, this was a dream to fulfill professionally and personally. But now, as we, as we sit here today and we're in the midst of a public health crisis um, of the highest degree, um, that this is something that we need now more than ever. So um, Maryland House Detox is the state's first and only standalone detoxification center. Um, this is specifically designed to act as a conduit into the larger treatment system. We have a, we have a treatment system here in Maryland. Uh, Maryland House Detox is not the end all be all. Maryland House Detox is not the answer. We're a part of the answer. And we're a part of the community and we're a part of the treatment community. So what Maryland House Detox has always been designed to do is be a conduit into the treatment system um, to increase access um, to uh, treatment. With 16 beds, we're going to be able to increase access at the detox level to 80 to 100 patients per month. So that's 80 or 100 people every month who may not have been able to access the treatment system. We're going to be able to, to access it through Maryland House Detox. Um, so we've reached really an all hands on deck type of situation uh, in the opioid crisis in this state and across the country. So um, the people who are here today, and I'll, I'll introduce a few and, and, and name, um, we really have everybody from uh, public officials to um, county and state uh, governments and agencies. And um, you've been our partners. In the last couple of years, you guys have been our partners and starting to break down um, the barriers to treatment in the state. Uh, but you've also worked with us to stamp out the stigma that's been attached to addiction. And that is one of our biggest missions here. Um, and one of the biggest hurdles that we face as we continue uh, to try to help solve the crisis that we're in. So um, thank you, thank you for that. Um, you know, we wanna make it clear that addiction is a disease. Addiction is not a moral failure. It cuts across all demographic lines. Um, and we are here to help. So the collective we, all of us. We've come a long way in breaking down that stigma through prevention and education, through law enforcement efforts, and treatment availability and eff efficacy. But we still have a long way to go. This is only 16 beds, um, and this is the first one. So um, we, we'll do our part. Maryland House, we're going to do our part in collaboration with treatment providers, local and state officials across Maryland. So. What I want to do is um, thank everybody for being here. I also want to acknowledge before we get before we get to our speakers. I'd like to acknowledge um, people who are here today who have supported us. <coughs> we have Chuck O'Connor from Senator Chris Van Hollen's office. Uh, we have. Clay Stamp from the uh, Executive Director of the Go Governor's Opioid Operational Command Center. We have Jim Hendrick, Policy Analysis of Governor uh, from the Governor's Office on Crime Control and Prevention. Uh, we have Denise Noe from the Maryland Department of Veteran Affairs. We have Barbara Allen from the Behavioral Health Advisory Council. We have Tom Williams from Maryland Public Television. Uh, we have Pat Daly from the Inner Arundel County Executive's Office. We have Captain Pete Smith, Councilman for District 1. We have Wes Adams, uh, Inner Arundel County State's Attorney. Uh, we have Chief Tim Altamar from Inner Arundel County Police. We have Fran Phillips, Acting Health Officer for Inner Arundel County. We have Sean Rutherford, Director of Parole, Parole and Probation. Uh, we have Dr. Gregory Branch, uh, the health officer for Baltimore County. From Howard County, we have Carolyn Lesser, the deputy chief of staff from the county executive's office. We have Dr. Maura Rossman, the health officer. 
Uh, we have also today we have Don Hibbert, the assistant special agent in charge of DEA. We have Todd Edwards from the DEA. We have Dr. Gregory Puskin, uh, president of MedCai. We have Yvette Torres, director of consumer affairs for SAMHSA. And we have Chong, Ch Chong Ri, Yi, president of My Life Foundation, the Korean Society of Maryland. crisis, Maryland House Detox looks forward to collaborating with Governor's Opioid Operational Command Center, headed by Clay Stamp. Clay Stamp is the Senior Emergency Management Advisor to Maryland's Governor, Larry Hogan, and Chair of the Governor's Emergency Management Advisory Council. Mr. Stamp currently serves as the Executive Director of the Opioid Operational Command Center, working with the Emergency Management System to effectively and efficiently coordinate statewide efforts in combating the heroin and opioid crisis in Maryland. Mr. Stamp is also the director of the of Talbot County Department of Emergency Services. Mr. Stamp has extensive experience working in disasters including the World Trade Center attacks, Hurricane Katrina, and the civil unrest in Baltimore and, and previously served under Governor Robert Ehrlich as deputy director of the Maryland EMS system and member of his senior Homeland Security Group. Mr. Stamp, Mr. Stamp came up through the ranks in Ocean City, Maryland as a young paramedic firefighter, becoming the first emergency management director and eventually the director of emergency services where he shepherded the development of many cutting edge services. Mr. Stamp currently resides in Easton with his wife. Help me welcome Clay Stamp. Good morning. Good morning. This is exciting. The who's who of the opioid crisis. <laughs> and, I, and I've noted that it's a growing army. And it's good because we need an army. Let me not, I hope I don't destroy your notes uh, here. Uh, so it's exciting to be here today. Um, now listening to that introduction, I should be exhausted. <laughs> um, no, so in all seriousness, the governor asked me to step in and help coordinate this crisis, which it truly is a crisis in Maryland. We all know that. Uh, I'd be preaching to the choir uh, to say any more about that, other than the fact that this crisis is particularly difficult. And we all know that. Because we do battle this stigma that is associated with it. We also battle this propensity for people to want to just hope that it goes away or ignores it. And we have, we have the competing interests that we constantly are battling trying to pull people together and sell a balanced approach to, to, to attack the crisis. I'm excited to be here today. David, thank you. Carol, thank you. Your team has been great to work with. I have something I want to share with you. Uh, today, I have the distinct honor of representing our governor, Larry Hogan, who is both passionate and resolute in his determination to successfully impact the devastating effects of the drug epidemic we are facing. I wish to congratulate and thank the Delphi Group, and specifically David Stoop, and Carol Boyer for moving forward, working with state and local officials to fill a vital need and for recognizing the importance of ensuring through accreditation quality of care for those who take the journey to recovery to choose the choice, um, to make the choice to take the journey to recovery from substance use disorder. Since March of this year, under Governor Hogan's call to action, we are positioning ourselves as a state to better coordinate programs in the areas of prevention, protection, and in treatment and recovery services. John. Um, as I travel the state, I'm seeing a lot of energy and a lot of activity, which is encouraging. That being said, we must realize that the fruits of our collective work will take time. We must treat those in need. We must work diligently to interrupt the flow of dangerous illicit drugs while working hard to achieve prevention through education, which ultimately is the answer. We must remove the demand from the supply. And we as a nation have seen this work before, with smoking, when cigarettes used to be on everybody's shopping list every week. Marylanders are on the move. I'm proud to be associated with a growing army of Marylanders who are elevating the conversation around substance use disorder, combating stigma. 
The stigma that keeps individuals and families cloaked in the dark shadows it casts, in part, prevents them from seeking help. Today reveals progress, another link in the chain in our efforts to combat the heroin and opioid epidemic in Maryland. Again, I congratulate the team and look forward to continuing this important fight together, a fight to save lives. And I have a, I have a, uh, a commendation from the governor that I would like to pre present to, um, uh, to you, David and Carol, if you don't mind coming up. Where did Carol go? I'm fine. <laughs> You're the one that called this party. <laughs> so be it known that on behalf of the citizens of the state in recognition of the occasion of the groundbreaking ceremony for the first standalone inpatient detox center in Maryland, in appreciation of the important contribution this facility will make to both the local community and our state, and as our citizens join together at the local and state level to combat the deadly opioid crisis plaguing our communities throughout the nation, we are pleased to confer upon you a governor's citation signed by Governor Larry Hogan, Boyd Rutherford, and the Secre uh, Secretary of State, John Bolton Smith. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Visitor Bridget Smith, the congressman for John Sarbanes. Thank you. We do. We do have three seats up here. Four seats. Five seats. There are some people who would like to sit. Sit. All right. Thank you, Clay. As Clay shared, the OCC works closely with all 24 jurisdictions throughout Maryland, and Fran Phillips, the Acting Health Officer for Anne Arundel County Department of Health, is not only here today to speak about health initiatives, but also to represent Anne Arundel County Executive Steve Shu, who is scheduled to be here, but sends his apologies for having to miss today's ceremony. Chris B. Phillips, RN, MHA, is currently the Acting Health Officer for Anne Arundel County, Maryland. She returned to Anne Arundel County Department of Health after retiring from the State of Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, where she held the position of Deputy Secretary for Public Health Services from 2008 to 2013. Prior to her, appoint prior to her appointment as Deputy Secretary, she had previously, previously served as the Health Officer for Anne Arundel County, Maryland from 1993 to 2008, including a term in 2004 when she served as the Interim County Fire Chief. <laughs> she has been active in public health as a consultant focusing on community health improvement and population health innovation. Ms. Phillips holds an undergraduate degree in community health nursing from the Catholic University of Maryland and a master's degree in healthcare administration from the George Washington University. She's an adjunct professor in the University of Maryland School of Nursing and an associate in the Department of Health Policy and Management at Johns Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health. Ms. Phillips is a resident of Anne Arundel County and she's here today. Well, good morning, thank you, David. Um, yeah, that stint with the fire department really was the high point. <laughs> that was so great to go into the stations unannounced as a civilian and see what really goes on inside, but it was all great. And it's great to be here this morning. It's a beautiful day. It could have been a lot worse. You know, you picked it. It was kind of sketchy. Okay, the end of November, we could have had uh, storms or snow or whatever, but it's a beautiful day. And uh, I do want to thank you for inviting me and for the opportunity to extend <coughs> congratulations uh, to you and your entire team, David, Carol. Uh, there's nobody like Carol, right? I mean, everybody that knows Carol. <laughs> I don't know who's, who else is on the team, but Carol is, is, is certainly one of a kind. I bring greetings from, uh, from the county executive, Steve Shue, uh, who, who really does send his sincere congratulations, his best wishes. Um, as many of you know, uh, Steve Shue is determined that Anne Arundel County be recognized as a business-friendly environment where entrepreneurs of all sectors, of all sizes, can flourish, where this can be a welcoming county for businesses, 
where businesses can grow and thrive. And certainly uh, the Delphi Group and having selected this site uh, for this facility is one that has really been truly recognized by the county executive and we're so pleased that you're here. Um, you know, we know that government cannot tackle this crisis alone and the opportunity to have you all with us as we meet this challenge is really re rewarding um, to the county executive. The county executive cannot be here, but he is uh, justifiably proud of the assets in this county, our resources, our location, it's pretty prime. I know I have my colleagues from Baltimore County and from Howard County are here, I'm gonna say Anne Arundel is the place to be, but okay, I'm gonna be a little biased about that, our location, we've got world-class uh, transportation resources and an outstanding, an outstanding county council. Okay, Councilman Smith is the bomb, is he? Yeah. Yeah. We have a tremendous workforce here in the county. So once again, thanks for joining our county. Um, we are proud of all that, but I will say that there's something that we're not proud of. And it's something that we work every day to reverse, and that's what you all do. We are not proud of the enormous burden that the opioid crisis has placed on county residents, on, on individuals who live and work in our county and our families. We are not proud of the fact that year to date, uh, uh, we have recorded in the county over 950 overdoses and tragically 139 lives have been lost in our county just in this year and that was just last week. We all know that holidays are a particularly uh, stressful period so I don't have the, the latest numbers on that. Like the rest of the region, we are hurting. We are really hurting. We are living through an epidemic now that is greater than the, the toll, the death toll of the HIV epidemic in its peak. We are now at a situation where we have more lives lost to drug overdoses than the car crashes. So if you, you absolutely know this is a public health emergency, it is one that public health cannot do alone and we absolutely rely on our law enforcement partners. Chief Altamir, our wonderful state's attorney, Wes Adams, the, the chief and Wes and I were together yesterday down in Prince Frederick talking about what we do here in this county with our congressman, <coughs> Congressman Steny Hoyer and the United States Surgeon General who is actually from Southern Maryland, and we had a lot to share in terms of what this county is doing to confront this tragedy. Uh, over a year ago, the county executive declared a, st a state of emergency with regard to the opioid epidemic here in the county, and as a result, it has been uh, a challenge every single day for every county agency to rally and to work on what we can do as it, from our agencies to avert this, to, to reduce these numbers. Our police department, I can't say enough about the tremendous work in partnership with public health that our police department does every day in terms of its investigatory unit and in terms of its participation in community outreach. Not My Child is a, 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 an amazing community prevention and education effort to destigmatize, to bring information to families, to parents, to kids. Uh, Wes is a, a, a tremendous participant along with our police department and others. Here in the county, we have a, an amazing program known as Safe Stations. I think most of you have known about it, where the fire stations and police stations <coughs> are open 24-7, 365 days a year to people who voluntarily want to come in and say, that's it, I'm done, I can't live with this anymore, I need to get into treatment. So that has been an amazing gateway for people, just like Maryland's House Detox will be. Amazing in the gateway to bring people into treatment in a non-threatening way. So, uh, so far we've had over 300 people just since the program opened at the end of April. The results are very, very promising and it, as a result of a team that is 24-7, will meet people where they are, <laughs> at the station where they are, when they present, in order to bring them forward into treatment. Can't say enough about the partnerships in this county. So this isn't my first rodeo in this place. I, as I told David, I'm old enough to remember another groundbreaking here, and I know, I know that our delegate Pam Vidal from this district uh, remembers that as well. This building, this is, so, this is so perfect, this building was built as a public health clinic back in the 40s to treat people who were working on the railroads and who were suffering from what was then a public health blight, tuberculosis. So there was a tremendous amount of activity here around an infectious community crisis, which was the tuberculosis. Um, epidemic that went through the migrant camps here. 
over time it evolved and it got more and more involved in um, maternal child health and other kinds of, of programs. So this was a health department clinic for decades. It transitioned when the county gifted the property to the Hospice of the Chesapeake. Again, another innovative, right for its time use for this building. At the time, this was the very first facility, inpatient facility for hospice patients, when it was realized that some hospice patients don't have a home where they can be served. And so this was a tremendous breakthrough in terms of innovation and service delivery. And now once again, it's come full circle, and it's another kind of innovation in terms of facing an opioid crisis, the likes of which we've never seen, but once again, is a public health crisis. I don't know what's next for this building, okay? I don't know what's next, but um, we'll worry about that once we, once we resolve the opioid crisis. Um, I, I do want to recognize the work that um, David and your, your board has taken with regard to the legal hurdles, the business hurdles, the financial hurdles to get to where we are today. It is not insignificant in Maryland that you need to go through some regulatory hoops in order to open for business if you are working in the health sector. <coughs> I have to say, as a member of the Maryland Health Care Commission, uh, appointed by Governor Hogan to that commission, I had the opportunity to hear David and his team make a presentation last year when they had the idea, they had the idea of building this facility. For some reason in Maryland, in order to open a drug treatment facility, you have to attest to something called a certificate of need. Now you tell me, why we need to make a case that there's a, that there's a need for this kind of facility. But nevertheless, that's the, that's the law of the land at this point. Maybe that will lighten up a little bit, um, hopefully in the next legislative session. The presentation that was made was extremely, um, extremely compelling, not only for the need, but also for some of the commitments. And I want you to know that those commitments are very, very valuable for public health. Maryland House Detox has committed to serving <coughs> low-income clients and setting aside beds, two beds, two beds out of the 16 <coughs> beds to serve low-income clients. I realize that, that that's a business decision to, that you made, but it's also a very, very valuable public health one. Likewise, committed to reaching out and maintaining contact with clients after they are discharged in order to make sure that their well-being is continued. So we know that the period here is just the front door of treatment. It's just the beginning of that long journey. And so what Maryland House Detox has done is to commit to callbacks. What's happening in your life? Where are you after people leave here and move uh, along their way on that journey? So I'm going to stop, but I have so many great things to say about Maryland House of Detox. But David, I have something to quibble with you about, OK? Yeah, let's do it. Here's how you characterize yourself. Maryland House Detox is the first standalone detox facility in Maryland. And I have to say that that may technically be true, but you will not stand alone. You will not stand alone in this county where you are surrounded in a network of providers, both treatment providers and recovery providers. You will not stand alone with regard to partnerships with Anne Arundel County government, and perhaps with some other counties, okay? I'm recognizing my neighbors uh, that are also here. So by all means, you will not stand alone, and on behalf of county government, I wish you the very best luck with this groundbreaking. Thank you. Oh, oh not to be undone by the governor, we have a citation for you.
We extend to you our sincere thanks and best wishes for continued success in all your future endeavors. Signed, Stephen R. Shue, County Executive, November 28, 2017. support during this process and look forward to being a part of this community and thank you for all of your personal support um, in our mission. So now to hear more about federal actions being implemented on the war on, against drugs, please welcome to the podium Don Hebert, the Assistant Special Agent in Charge for the Baltimore Field Office of, drug, of the Drug Enforcement Administration. Assistant Special Agent in Charge Don Hebert entered into, entered on duty with the Drug, drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, in November 1970, 1997. <laughs> 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 Prior to joining the DEA, Mr. Hibbert, Mr. Hibbert was a trooper with the New York State Police for approximately five years. After completing DEA basic agent training in Quantico, Virginia, Mr. Hibbert spent time as a special agent in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and Washington, D.C. During this time, Mr. Hibbert directed numerous and complex criminal investigations. These cases ranged from street-level enforcement buys while acting in an undercover capacity to complex wiretaps and wiretap investigations targeting international conspiracies resulting in the indictment and subsequent extradition of foreign nationals to the United States to face prosecution. Mr. Hibbert also worked on several high-profile investigations targeting corrupt law enforcement officers. In August 2010, Mr. Hibbert was assigned to the Baltimore District Office as the Group Supervisor of the Violent Trafficker Initiative, which consisted of federal, state, and local law enforcement officers to target violent drug trafficking or organizations operating in Maryland and beyond. Under his leadership, the BTI Group seized 140 kilograms of cocaine, seven kilograms of heroin, $4 million in cash and assets, 91 weapons, and arrested 140 violators. Mr. Hibbert was named the 2012 Haida Outstanding Task Force Commander. <laughs> Almost. In December 2013, Mr. Hibbert was again promoted and spent two years at DEA headquarters where he oversaw many important and crucial programs. In October 2015, Mr. Hibbert was laterally reassigned to his current position as Special Agent in Charge of the Baltimore District Office, where he oversees 170 personnel assigned to Enforcement Intelligence Groups, Haida Task Force, and Administrative Staff. Please help me welcome Don Hibbert. that to stop a little bit there. I was like feeling a little bashful about some of the things we're talking about. But uh, thank you all for uh, inviting me, in, and then I want to be a part of this uh, ceremony. Again, my name is Don Hibbert. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the DEA Baltimore District Office. And this, this gathering today, as far as I'm concerned, for DEA is the new normal, okay? This is what we need to have. This is the collaboration we need to have, where you're going to see DEA partnering with public health, public safety, uh, treatment community, uh, to tackle this opioid crisis. As I mentioned, this is my, I just celebrated my 20th year with DEA last, that last Thursday on Thanksgiving, and this is the worst crisis I've seen in my career, okay? This is the worst. I've seen a lot of different things in, in 25 years in law enforcement, but this is the absolute worst. You know, in 2015, 52,000 Americans died of a drug overdose. 33,000 of those were opioid related, all right? That, I mean, those numbers are staggering. That's why I'm glad to be a part of this effort um, to support, um, you know, the Maryland House, Maryland Detox House. I'm glad to be here to support this effort. This is what we need to be doing as DEA. All right? This opioid crisis has impacted families and communities throughout the country. Um, every 25 minutes, a baby is born addicted to, uh, to uh, drugs. 
Okay, that is one out of 200 uh, children born every day in this country, one out of 200. The Centers for Disease Control reports the number of babies born in the United States with the drug withdrawal symptom has quadrupled over the last 15 years, okay? One in seven people in the U.S. are expected to develop some sort of addiction throughout their lifetime. 70% of those who try an illicit drug before age 13 uh, develop a substance use disorder within seven years, okay? So the, the goal is we have to try to prevent the use of drugs at an early age. We're out doing our enforcement efforts with DEA, and we do a great job of it, okay? But we have to understand that we, DEA, cannot do this alone, okay? We need everyone to be a part of this effort. And that's something that we've just come to the realization in the last couple of years, all right? DEA is an agency. We've just come to that realization, which is why now we look to partner with everybody out there, all the different folks, prosecutors, um, you know, uh, public health. I see the chief is here. We work very closely with the Anne Arundel County Police Department. He has several TFOs assigned to DEA, and they do a great job, and we collaborate and do a lot of great investigations. All right? Um, locally, here in Anne Arundel County, it's been particularly hit hard. Uh, we just cited the numbers uh, in the county. I won't go through those, but we know they're pretty bad. What we are seeing, though, folks, is, um, you know, to date, um, we're seeing the fentanyl that's increasing. We're actually seeing a decrease in heroin, um, people got from it. People are now going to fentanyl. And we're seeing fentanyl pressed into uh, pill form. So it can look like people may think they're going out to purchase um, you know, Oxycontin or Percocets or some other form of uh, prescription opioid uh, pill, but in reality, they're taking fentanyl pressed into pill form. We just had a seizure in this county a couple of weeks ago where I believe we seized about 6,000 pills in the county fentanyl pills, okay, that we prevent from getting off the streets. I mean, that's, that's what we're going and dealing with these days, is that level of um, uh, distribution of, of drugs. And right? again, it's just not in the powder form, it's being pressed in the pill form. So people that think they're taking um, um, <coughs> opioid pill could naturally be taking fentanyl. So again, but we're down roughly 24% on heroin fatalities in the state, but we're up 30% with fentanyl. Okay, and that's the real killer. Back in um, June of this year, um, DEA, working with our partners, again, we, we have task forces and partnerships all over the state, we seized 31 kilograms of fentanyl coming into Maryland. Okay, that was enough fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child in the state of Maryland. Okay, and uh, so, and that, that drug, those drugs are coming directly from Mexico. Okay, so that's what we're seeing here. And again, we really have to work hard on our end but also partner with our folks in the treatment and to, um, to, to reduce the demand and the supply, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a multi-pronged strategy. Reduce the demand and the supply, okay? Um, so DEA, we're working together with our partnerships uh, throughout the country, throughout Maryland. And I'm, I'm glad, to, again, I'm glad to be here to be a part of this event. We're gonna work more closely and we're trying to bring some efforts into Maryland where we're gonna kind of bring everybody together and look to partner more closely to help reduce the flow, work with our partners, public health, public safety, to help reduce the demand, all right? While we continue to do our enforcement strategies, we're trying to get more resources. I'm constantly on the DEA headquarters and asking for more resources. I think I bugged them down there quite a bit, so, you know. But I know what we need in the state. I've had two tours of duty in the state. I love being in Maryland. I've been fortunate now to be able to leave the office for DEA here in Maryland. And um, we just want to make sure that we are doing everything we can do on the federal level to help reduce the demand. All right, these drugs are coming in from Mexico, from China, and, and we have to work with everyone, everyone, to make sure we reduce the overall supply and to reduce the availability of drugs on our streets, particularly here in Anne Arundel County. In Anne Arundel County, which has been, again, very hard hit by the opioid epidemic as we have, again, throughout the state. So thank you very much, and I look forward to meeting with all of you and being a part of uh, this uh, effort going forward in Maryland and particularly here in Anne Arundel County. Thank you very much.
but we're going to do our part. So um, now actually what I want to do is uh, introduce you to uh, the Maryland House Detox team. So uh, as I introduce you, if you can please come up and stand, stand next to me. So we have our co-founder, Cynthia Curtis. Uh, we have our executive director, Scott Gibordi. Our director of community relations that everybody knows come on <laughs> um, so now at this point um, what we're gonna do is I want to introduce uh, Pastor Terry Allen who will do a blessing and then what we'll do is we'll head outside um, and I'll do I'll say one more word before we head outside we'll head outside we'll break ground and then we'll really get started on this thing. I always, as a pastor, I always say praise the Lord. <laughs> but we uh, we thank God for this detox center. It's much needed. And it's being on the ground level of dealing with people who come to my church and families who lost their uh, sons and daughters. And I see so many parents outliving their children is heartbreaking. And I know people will protest that we don't want, want this here, but it's much needed, even more so. And I made a comment to, I believe David, that it needs to be bigger, because I see the need from the ground level when I see their parents and mothers crying. And I just want to say, uh, I pray for more help, and it takes churches, community, and every business, Vendors that we need to get this together. I thank you for, for being here and I thank you for having me. Father God, in the name of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, we want to thank you right now for this gathering, for all the press, for all the business, and for all the vendors. Lord, we need this situation to help set captive people free. We all work together. Lord, I pray right now that you bless this treatment center, Lord. Everybody who needs it, Lord, make, make it prosper. Let it meet the need of the community and everyone that is involved. Lord, we pray for everybody who faces an addiction, who struggles, who, who fights to get well, to get better, Lord. And we know by your power and by our partnering together, Lord, you can make this happen. Lord, to help save our community, help save our children, and help save our people. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless this business, bless this detox center, make it prosper, and make it be uh, healthy for healthy people and set captive people free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Alright, so we're going to head outside. One more special thanks to RPH Architecture and Brown Contracting. They're local here to Anne Arundel County. They've helped us every step of the way along this project. So we're going to head outside. We're going to put some hard hats on. We're going to break ground. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We're very excited to work with you. We'll be hopefully open in March or April, um, and we'll, we'll be working collaboratively with everybody in this room. Thank you.